So uh, good, evening, good evening everyone. Uh, we're uh, just here today with an update um, as there has been a somewhat significant change in the fire and its behavior uh, in and around Fort McMurray and uh, we thought it would be helpful to give people uh, the best information that we have on hand. Uh, in effect, as we uh, indicated might happen this morning, um, the fire has uh, begun burning north and at this time it is flanking to the west of the community of Timberley. Um, what we're told is that there's a pretty substantial burned out area between where the fire is now and the community and there's uh, roughly five kilometers between where the fire is and the community and it's flanking north. Nonetheless, uh, roughly um, 150 to 200 firefighters are in that community that are they're keeping an eye out for um, ember spread that uh, should that move into that community and uh, we're told so far so good. Uh, meanwhile, the fire is moving north at a fairly good pace um, and uh, recently crossed Tower Road. Um, a mandatory evacuation has put in been put in place for several small camps along Astra Road uh, and it amounts to about five to six hundred people being evacuated north um, to Suncor and Sincrude. Meanwhile, um, there is a precautionary, just a precautionary evacuation in place um, at Sincrude and Suncor at this time. North of these facilities, there is no immediate threat or any precautionary um, uh, threat in place. Um, both Sincrude and Suncor have emergency plans in place, which they are operationalizing, and, uh, and firefighters in place as well. Officials are confident that should additional trigger lines be uh, crossed, that people can be evacuated safely um, if necessary. Meanwhile, back in uh, Fort McMurray, um, roughly 300 uh, people, mostly utility workers, have been asked to assemble um, at McDonald Island uh, simply for the sake of knowing where folks are. Uh, another 300 people or so are in the hospital and are sheltering in place at that facility. Um, the the interim medical um, uh, field operation uh, remains open for first responders who, who may need it and remaining personnel in Fort McMurray are uh, deployed throughout the city uh, working on fire suppression and hotspot suppression activities. Um, so uh, while some people were relocated, there is no evacuation in place for Fort McMurray um, at this time. Uh, so a little bit of a change, a little pretty much exactly what we said would happen uh, is happening. Uh, there, it is a dynamic time right now. We're in that, that fairly aggressive burning period. Um, it should fade out and slow down uh, in between about 8 and 9 o'clock tonight and then we'll have a better sense of where things stand. And I will uh, pass it over to, uh, to Chad to offer up any additional information um, around the behavior of the fire. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Chad Morrison, Alberta Wildfire. Uh, 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 so most of the information has been covered already. I just wanted to point out a couple things. Uh, again, extreme fire behavior day to day that we expected with the strong south winds. Uh, the fire is moving parallel to the community at this time to the north. Um, and as noted, there is the original fire does provide a very good fire guard for firefighters to work from. And we have many of our firefighters deployed in the community itself, so the folks are working carefully there just as a precautionary measure. Um, we knew this would be a, a difficult fire day, and so there's still lots of work to go tonight, and uh, we'll s it's uh, very dynamic. The fire is about 15 to 20 kilometers still to the south of the major uh, oil sands facilities at this time. And then if there's any more information as to those components, I can pass to back to the Scott. Okay. Yep. No. Happy to take questions. We had reports that there was 4,000 people out of camps. Is that the same crew? Can you just clarify where yep. they're coming from? Yeah. So that, that's exactly it. So as I said, there was mandatory evacuation of a small group uh, be in, in small camps between uh, um, Tower Road and and Sincrud Suncor, and that amounts to between four and five hundred people, or sorry, five and six hundred people. Meanwhile, there are between four and five thousand people in Sincrud and Suncor. Um, those are not the subject of mandatory evacuations at this time. Uh, the fire has not crossed the trigger points yet for that to happen. Um, and they are engaging in precautionary evacuations of non-essential personnel, but uh, uh, the fire has not yet moved 
that close to the facilities. You know, how many people are, are being sent out? The 600 you mentioned plus the non-essential people, how many is not? Um, that is, I'm not exactly sure of the numbers at this point. Do you want to add to that, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> So Scott Long, Executive Director, Operations, Alberta Emergency Management Agency. So every industry has got its own emergency management plans and shut-in procedures. Uh, right now they're evacuating again, as the Premier said, non-essential personnel uh, to the north to other facilities in a controlled, orderly manner. Uh, the non or the, the essential personnel that they're leaving behind, we don't have precise numbers, but clearly that's the industrial firefighters uh, and folks that are required to uh, keep uh, the, uh, the camps operating and, and to complete the shut-ins. Is, so is 4,000 accurate then? Because that's what the regional municipality was, was saying, that for about 4,000... Between the two camps, there's approximately 4,000 people, yes. And but not all of them have been evacuated? No, not at all. They're all heading north by ground, you said, right? Not all. Precautionary evacuation, non-essential personnel from Syncrude and Suncor, a total of 4,000 in both those locations, are being evacuated orderly, control manner, safely to the north as a precautionary evacuation. As the fire progresses, if it gets closer, then there will be triggers that would determine an, a mandatory evacuation. And at that point in time, all remaining personnel would complete the shut-ins uh, and they would move uh, to uh, camps to the north as well. So what is the threat to the oil sands operations and, and the, that they started shutting down as well again, or what's the situation? Uh, the other facilities uh, are all, as far as I'm aware, they're not under threat at this point in time and they are not... Uh, uh, impacted. It's just the Suncor and Syncrude at this particular point in time. Uh, and uh, uh, we're very hopeful that uh, it's precautionary. We're very hopeful that we'll be able to hold a line. But if not, we want to make sure that people's lives are taken care of. And the mandatory evacuation involves how many small camps? Uh, there were four camps, I believe, along Astra Road. Uh, and they were uh, Astra Road, A O S T R A, is in much closer proximity. Uh, in the southwest uh, uh, to the fire line. So uh, that is why that particular area is mandatory. Is there any, anything significant on Tower Road? Because it's been breached now, Tower Road's been breached. It's just a, uh, it's a geographic feature on the map that we used as a uh, phased line. Jack, can you give us some more information on what the threat is to Timberley and what you're doing about it? Like, are they sort of spraying water on roofs here? Are we at that situation? Yeah, Chad from Fire Wildfire again. Um, uh, no, it's not at that stage. You know, what they'll do is they'll pre-position and have all their firefighters in, in there should that occur. Right now the fire isn't uh, impacting there, so it's still moving, like I said, parallel to the north. And so uh, there's lots of time there and plenty of resources in order to do that, as we've sort of seen and been demonstrated in the past. Uh, they've done a very, very good job holding the line there. And with the extra fire guard out there, I believe that they'll be quite successful. Um, and, and, and to add to Scott's stuff there as well, everything is precautionary, but we want to make sure that everyone is getting the information is up to date and that they have the, the time ahead of time to, to move in an orderly fashion. So, yes, so they're well positioned at where they're at now. How quickly is the fire moving? We heard a report that it was moving 30 to 40 meters per minute. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's an accurate, uh, when this type of conditions, we'll see that. The fire will actually begin to slow here uh, as we start to reach past the dinner hour and as we get closer to the evening. We're not even sure if the fire will reach the, the northern facilities at this point, but again, want to be precautious about it. So we have those trigger points uh, established in place and working with industry and the, the regional municipality to make sure that as those, if those trigger points get hit, that they can make the calls early enough and have plenty of time for folks. Are any more firefighters being put on this, the north development? There's a there's a number of firefighters working on that north section, so we have multiple branches all over uh, the fire. Uh, we've had very good success in the south, actually establishing and more guard in line today. We have folks on the Saskatchewan side uh, working there, as well as folks in the north fire bag area. And in the north section here, obviously the priority is the community and some of the, the facilities. We were expecting a bit of a run today, so we had dozers uh, working the tower road, building it as a, as, a, as a line that we could try and hold from. Unfortunately, it's jumped that. Uh, this is the type of fire behavior we saw that jumped the Athabasca. Basque River. This is similar type of fire behavior out there. So that was one of the lines that we were hoping to hold, but we weren't able to today due to the extreme fire conditions. Uh, but again, we, we're still hopeful that uh, we'll continue to have success here tonight. But again, a little too early to tell as the fire uh, day starts to wind down, we should have more information. Scott, can you just clarify for me, are there, so the north of Fort McMurray, we're getting the people out that need to get out, but is, is there infrastructure or assets that are, that are threatened here? Um, right now, again, precautionary with regards to Syncrude and Suncor. The right thing to do 
uh, for the safety of uh, their workers. They know that. I've been, I had a conversation at 5 p.m. with our industry partners, uh, and uh, they're well aware where we are and where the fire is, so we're really plugged in on that side. So precautionary for Suncrude and uh, Syncor, Sun, sorry, Syncrude and Suncor, mandatory for those uh, uh, smaller facilities that are on Ostra Road because, again, unpredictable nature of the fire. Uh, they could have been cut, uh, cut off quite, uh, quite easily, so that's why it was mandatory and it was done in time. Sorry, and how far is the fire from St. Crude and Suncorp? Um, I'll turn to Chad. Yeah, at this point, our latest report, it's about 15 to 20 kilometres. It just has just breached uh, the Tower Road uh, area there uh, probably about uh, 15 minutes ago. Uh, the big factor, obviously, for folks, the folks that are there on site is they'll see very, very heavy, dark smoke. And so that'll obviously uh, be a big concern. So uh, smoke is probably, heavy smoke is probably the biggest issue there right now. And then we'll continue to see how the fire day, once it starts to die down, where, where we're able to hold it at. But yeah, about 15 to 20 kilometres away. That smoke could hamper your ability to, to get out of them. Uh, heavy smoke, uh, it does make it unsafe to fly in some spots, but that we're able to still work the sides and the flanks of it and, and hope to pinch it off. But when you have this type of extreme fire behavior, it uh, doesn't matter what tankers you put in front of it or it doesn't matter how many helicopters, it's, it's going to continue to move. Mother Nature's one, it's going to continue to move that fire forward with the strong south winds that we have. Uh, that being said, we, with those con we've had to slow it down a little bit with the containment line on, on the Tower Road. We continue to slow it down as it goes here, and then we're hopeful as, as night begins to fall that, uh, that it doesn't, that it gets, we hold it, and then we're able to jump on in the morning. We're expecting actually tomorrow the winds to actually shift to the west. So if we're able to hold it tonight away from the facilities and stuff, that we should have a favorable day to continue to get at it tomorrow there. Is the air quality index even higher now then? I can't speak to air quality index at this time. Obviously, very dynamic situation, and with the you know the monitoring system, that they can probably report on that afterwards. The time of day is on your side, but what's what's the dangerous factor here? Is it the winds that might shift then? What? Um, you know what? Uh, the, the winds is the, are in the worst spot right now, and that's why we've seen the behavior that we had. But that was predicted for today, so we planned for it. Obviously, with like I said, our secondary containment lines on the Tower Road. Um, so actually, once the winds usually die down in the evening, and, and the most of the front has passed, that we're actually expecting the fire to slow down a little bit over the next few hours and so we'll kind of continue to see that dynamic uh, movement though still. We're past the worst of it then fingers crossed? Um, I would say that it's too early to tell but it is a, a very we're still in our peak burning period till about eight or nine o'clock at night so you know obviously we're very concerned and watching the situation very closely and obviously monitoring those trigger points as to when we need to move more people. So. Air quality got in the way of vehicle pickups this morning is it is that still a problem now? What's that like? Uh, in this situation, air quality is not an issue. Certainly, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the urgency that we're looking at is with regards to the oil and gas infrastructure. Uh, everything within Fort McMurray itself, the community, uh, all controlled, orderly. Uh, there's no panic there. You've got a lot of first responder experts that have the proper gear that are ready to hold a line. And as Chad said, there's already quite the buffer there. Uh, and they've just added and reinforced quite a bit more. So I think we're fairly confident, fingers crossed, knock on wood, when it comes to Fort McMurray. Uh, my concern or uh, our concern tends to be more towards the oil and gas infrastructure in the north. Premier, we're pretty close to the Saskatchewan boundary now then. So have you had talks with Premier Walden? What happens then if this thing really starts to, to go into to a second province? Uh, well, I think, I mean, we've already had that, of course, because the BC fire uh, came into into Alberta. And so I'll let these guys uh, add to it. But there have already been uh, quite a bit of coordination between the ju two jurisdictions in terms of uh, the, the direction of the fighter and, and for Saskatchewan in particular, looking at uh, communities that, that could be impacted at the other side of it. So I think they've started preparing for it and they've been co uh, coordinating very closely. Uh, but it has not yet reached because up until over the last few days, up until today, it had sort of started to slow down in terms of that incredible pace of growth. Um, so we, we hadn't gotten quite to the point of the premier to premier conversation, but we'll definitely our officials are working closely together and, and uh, should it cross the border, we'll be in touch. But Have the uh, Greenview County and the Clear Hills County fires also been, been growing at a concerning pace today? Um, yeah, Chad from Alberta Wildfire. Uh, good question. Actually, we had very good progress on the Clear Hills County fire uh, out on the BC border. So we continue to hold that one and establish uh, lots of dozer guard there and work well with uh, our BC partners. So uh, we've actually held that fire for most of today, which is really good. There's been a bit of excursion, but nothing unexpected. So we've been able to hold that fire. Uh, we had also uh, very fortunate luck and, and some work of some very hard 
uh, firefighters there on the um, the one near Little Smoky uh, in Greenview. Um, and at this point, uh, they've held the fire size for the most part throughout today. Uh, we had dozers working through the night last night, as many of you may know. Uh, the plan is again to work dozers through the night there. The size is, is relatively held, so we've had very little growth maybe 10% growth on that, so we've been able to hold that. Uh, we're expecting with the, the wind front as well to change tomorrow to push the fire away from those two communities, but there is some pre precautionary notices out there just for so folks are on the, on the safe side, but again, we expect to hold it uh, tomorrow and continue to put more line in overnight.